Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Damn. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. <laughs> we be on fire, we be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. What's going on? Hey, how you doing today, man? I'm there, blessed. Man, they got us way down here in Atlanta. You know, we, we, we said we was going to continue to keep on doing the job while we came down here on business. Official business right here, though. Hey. Check it, man. We got somebody today, you guys, man. Very special, man. Pastor Z is in the building. Hey. Man. Say, hey. man. Hey. So, 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 what's up? Man, living. Life is great. God is good. I'm happy to be here. I'm honored. Thank y'all for having man. me. You and Miss Jamaica. Check it, man. So, 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 are you, you say you from Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff, Texas. That's man. my hood. Oh, look. <laughs> all day, all day. That's your hood. Yes. Yeah, Born and raised. Trap on them just remade that. I Did they? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Man, man. I, didn't, I ain't even know it. <laughs> I'm out of the loop. <laughs> yeah, you out of here, man. So how's everything going, man, with the transition down here in Atlanta? You know what? I love it. You know, um, it was definitely a faith move. It was God gave me a word, told me to come here, and it was just a blind move. Um, it was, it was a, I was a little nervous. Okay, a little. I lied. I was nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> had and you visited here before? I had. I had been here once. Okay. And, um, um, because I'm an actress as well, and so I did. Right, I heard that. Yeah, I'm an actress. So I've done film, and um, I've done stage. I've done a lot. And the last time I was here is for the Bronzelands Film Festival, mm -hmm. and we had a movie here in the film festival, and I was sick the whole time, so I didn't really get a chance to look okay, around and around. enjoy the city. And the next time I came was when I moved. But so, Atlanta, of all places, why right. Atlanta? You know what? It was God. It was all God. Um, I remember in 2017, he had dropped a word and was like, you know what? You're going to be moving to Atlanta. And so I was ready to go then. I was like, okay, well, let's go. It was a lot of chaos going on in my life, but it wasn't, it was the bad timing. And so um, I had finally gotten stabilized. Things had kind of mellowed out in my life. And then God was like, hey, you're going to Atlanta. And I was like, no, no, I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, things are finally good in my life. And then he just starts short, shutting every door around me. Wow. And next thing you know, I was like, every door that I was like, I couldn't go, he just opened it wide open. So he was shutting doors, opening wow. doors, and it was just a smooth transition. And I've been here ever since. I don't know why you, the things that you're saying, it doesn't. What came to my mind was Jonah and the whale. Listen. Because <laughs> he wanted him to go here, but he mm -hmm. said, no, I'm going over here. Yeah. And he shut all, he's like, oh, you gonna listen to me. Yeah, and that's exactly what started happening. It was it was crazy how it happened though, because um, I was, I wouldn't say it was excuses. They were, it was real life stuff of, mm -hmm. of reasons why I could not go. And a lot of things that were holding me back, it was like, God was like, I got you. If mm -hmm. you just be obedient and do what I told you to do, I worry about everything else. I've already made the way. I just need you to be obedient and go. It's and not so even that's what obedience I have a lot to do with it, but faith have even more. It's huge. To know that you can huge. lay all of your fears, all of your worries mm -hmm. in him and know that he's going to open those doors. Right. Even when times seem hard, you might not be able to, you know, you're like, oh, where am I going to stay? Where am I going to mm -hmm. stay? All of a sudden, somebody comes up and say something to you. Man, this, I mean, just the entire wow. transition from packing to moving out here, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure if we have time for that, but I don't even want to go into it. But it was literally by faith and it was dark and it wasn't until I got here. Did you here. know where you were going to come to when yes. you came here? Well, yeah. So the apartment that I lived in in Dallas, I, I live at their sister property. So okay. that part just worked. That, it just kind of okay, worked so at out. least you had somewhere to lay your Right. <laughs> but when I got here, I remember I was laying on my air mattress. I had a, a truck full of furniture and I was just crying. I was like, God, I'm down here. You got me here. I don't know what to do. And then the Holy Spirit was like, listen, I've made a way for you to get here every step. And so you either keep moving and I keep making a way or you can stand still and nothing's happening. Were you doing a ministry in Dallas as well? No. Well, I was already an ordained pastor. Okay, um, but you I'm weren't gonna, doing... Right. I didn't have my own ministry or anything else. I was actually partnering with my uncle. He has a ministry called Turning Point Christian Fellowship in Dallas. In Dallas, okay. And so um, I had left that ministry and came here and I was actually attending another church. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was nothing with me, like my ministry personally. I always had a prayer line, but that was it. It wasn't until last July, actually, 
Well, the crazy part is today is the one year anniversary of God telling me to start ZMR Ministries. Mm. And I was on the phone with a friend last night, just talking to like four in the morning. And she and I, my best friend, and we were talking. And I said, yo, today I put it on my calendar. And I said, what what is the coincidence or the odds that today is the actual mm. day that God told me to start ZMR Ministries? And then it just went full throttle. And a year later, it's a full baby running and walking and talking. So, so with you starting your ministry... And God told you to do that. Um, what is it about you and your ministry that makes you different from any other ministry? It's not traditional. So we bring in the pulpit to conversation. So instead of preaching a sermon, because a lot of people, you know, the sad part is they have a, a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to church. Mm -hmm. They have a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to preachers. I'm not going to say when you say church, because we're not traditional. We, no, hold on, mm -hmm. hold on. I'm going to tell you. For us, we don't we say that building. Right. So, because we believe or the that, or the auditorium, because uh -huh, uh -huh. we believe that church is anywhere you gather together. Two it or three it gather. is. But a lot of people, because of tradition, mm -hmm. thinking church is that building over right, here. Right. Right. So every time when someone says that, I always this. No, you're it. you're absolutely right because we are the church. Right. We really. are. Um, but, but I want to hear the rest of your story. Go ahead. But the thing about it was, um, the Lord was just like some people may never go into a church and listen to a sermon, you know, the, the times are changing. The way that God is is getting the gospel out into the four corners of the world is different. And so what I did was take practicality and spirituality and put it at the table. Mm -hmm. So it's not just preaching to you about love, about faith. It's actually having a conversation with somebody. They're telling their story. We're talking about real life situations, circumstances, and answering questions that they may never get in the pulpit. They may never go to counseling. They may never talk to a therapist but they're learning about that particular topic by listening to me and whichever guest is there and not all of my guests are in ministry but everything that you do when you're doing that are you still referring everything right back to scripture yes so it is scripture based because a lot of people who talk about instances and we call them motivational speakers because mm -hmm. they'll you know tell you about what happened to them mm -hmm. and da, 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 but never mention hardly anything Related to the Bible. No, 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 no. Everything is scripture based. Everything goes right back to the word. I mean, it wouldn't be ZMR Ministries without the word. And I understand ministry is in different facets. It's mm -hmm. in different forms. Um, like you said, it's, it's interesting you said that because I actually had a conversation like that with a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. And he felt like I am a preacher. And mm -hmm. I was like, where is your biblical context? You know, where's your text that you're coming from? And he's like, I don't have to quote the Bible to be a minister. And I'm like, bruh, yeah, yeah you actually do. you do. You know, especially if you are speaking to unbelievers, you know, our whole point is to win them to Christ. You can't win them to Christ without his word. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, everything scriptural breaks based. We don't just go off of personal testimony. Some of it is, but a, a lot of it is real life circumstances. Mm -hmm. We're talking about things in the secular world. We're talking about because it's it's weekly on, on Facebook and YouTube, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Let me put that tag in there <laughs> on Facebook and YouTube. But every day is something different. On Mondays, we have what's called Move Swing Monday, and we are coming with one word, and it's usually starting with R-E. So you're resetting, you're realigning, you're readjusting, you're re-something, reconstructing, just to give you a thought to, to carry out the rest of your week, but it's all taken from the scripture. So we give you the definition of the word. We relate it to your personal life, but we also line it up with text from the scripture. So you can go throughout your week saying, where do I need to readjust? Where do I need to reconstruct? Where do I need to realign? Where do I need to repent? It's always with a re. Tuesdays, we t it's entrepreneurs. It, we call it entrepreneur what? We're talking to entrepreneurs, how they started, how they can encourage other people to start their business. Wednesdays, we call what's the and issue And this is virtually? Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. 100% online. Um, we do what's the issue Wednesday, and it's always a certain issue, whether it's a church issue, whether it's a world issue, whether it's abuse, whether it's something else. Um, it's always related to the gospel. Thursdays is Bible study, walk the word, and Fridays is girl talk, where we we chill out. We sit back, we kick back, and we talk about real stuff that the church don't want to talk about, sex masturbation, you know, abuse, um, attitudes, things that we don't get taught behind a pulpit, but it's conversation that we would have with each other. It's like, now let's talk about it in a group setting with me and my girls. And we always end it with an encouraging word saying, hey, you know, maybe you need to pray about this when you get with you and your girls and y'all talk about it. But you know, not only the, that, anything that you're going through, even what you're talking about other girls, mm -hmm. but people don't realize that you can relate everything back to the Bible, to right. scripture, because yep. when you're talking, because 
not just power, and a lot mm-hmm. of people don't know, mm-hmm. and there's nothing new under the sun, right. but you just have to search and really figure out, okay, oh, that's what she was, okay, mm-hmm. okay, and that's how you can relate it to today. Right. And each person can take a certain person, whether it was Prophetess Anna or anybody from the Bible, a female, and say, mm-hmm. that's me, mm-hmm. because of what she went through and how she overcame it. Yeah, and it's, it's, I mean, I love that you said that because the Bible says my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And so a lot of people may never pick up a Bible. You are their Bible. Mm-hmm. And so if you are living out the word, if you are walking out the word, if you are talking the word and, and always relating it back to scripture, you're feeding them the word, whether they know it or not. And so you want to encourage them to go back and read it for themselves because I grew up in church. I grew up in a church home, Kojic, Church of God of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and we always, you know, it was just inundated in us, mm-hmm. but it wasn't until I became an adult that I started reading and really reading and studying for myself that I was just like, okay, I was just quoting this stuff. You know, it wasn't real life to There's me. There's a difference between quoting exactly. and getting the true meaning and putting it behind Exactly. You. And that's, that's what started happening for me. I started learning the word for myself and God was taking me on my own journey, my own walk. I wasn't living off of my family prayers, you know, their testimonies. It was like God was making me a testimony. He was making me a blueprint for somebody else. And so that's that's what happens. You know, it's like you always want to get it for yourself. You know what a crazy thing is, is that and I don't know if y'all know anybody who can be who can contradict this, but everybody I know is that um, have learned about God and really accepted him now as an adult mm-hmm. and um, really f- know the true meaning of his word. Is always as an adult because like you have to go through a lot before you learn to appreciate mm-hmm. and really have these words stick into your brain no matter how much you've been in church or you've been taught from a kid i'm sure there's some children out there who can still look at the word and um and it means something to them you understand right. what i mean but not many i feel like you have to be an adult and go through a lot before you can really accept it i think the best way to put that is you know there are advantages and disadvantages of growing up in church and so of course you you learn the word you know who god is you've seen the miracles you've seen you know people get saved you've seen everything however i have a good friend who's who's a prophet she's a pastor and she didn't grow up in church she didn't even start going to church till she was about 19 20. but the advantage that she had is she didn't have to unlearn all of the stuff that I had learned growing up in church. So all the traditionalism, um, all the religiosity, all of the, um, you know, the man-made rules that we thought we had to abide by. I had to unlearn all of those things and get to know God for me. And she never had to go through that process. So the, the process that she has in knowing Christ for herself is so pure. It's just like, I didn't have to unlearn that stuff. I didn't have to get past the church hurt. I didn't have to get past, you know, seeing this and then people live in a certain way, this way and then a certain way, another way. I didn't have to get past the titles and that people put on me or the expectations that you right. were expected to have, how you're supposed to walk. It just came fresh and for her. as a child, um, children do as they're told. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times they can't rebel to say, Oh no, that that can't be right. Or you right. know, this is how I read it, and this is how I got it. What y'all saying is, most children are not going to stand up to their mm-hmm. elders right. and say that no, this what how you're teaching this and what you're doing is not correct. And you know what? I think a lot of times, and I've grown into this, um, is to forgive them. Because they were only doing what they were taught. What they were taught. And so when we would ask questions about the word or, you know, question it, they would say, you don't question the word. You know, don't question God. The Bible is black and white. And I'm like, no, he wants us to question. That's how relationship comes. You learn God through the word. And so if I want more understanding or I'm not, or I don't agree with something, why wouldn't he want me to ask? He wants Mm -hmm. us to come to him. He wants us to pour it all in his lap. He wants to endow us with the wisdom, with revelation, all of those things. And so growing Growing up in the kind of church that I grew up in, a lot of it was just just to the point. You know, you what live in the church where you in. I was in Church of God in Christ. Okay. No, no shade, y'all. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the it's just the way that it was. And it wasn't until I, you know, stepped away and God took down those boundaries and parameters around my mind, around my spirit. And it's it's crazy that I'm I'm almost 39 and there are things that are still shedding away. That he's just like, you can't have this way of thinking and be fit for the kingdom. You know, that's not how I think. That's not, let me show you this in the word. And so it's like, I think about Jesus and he was always an outcast. 
He was a rebel. He never fit in with the church people. He was always out and about amongst everybody else that we would look at and say, you don't need to be around them. You know, they they not say they not this, you, you know, this, that and the other. And Jesus, he didn't care. He didn't care. And so it's learning that, like not caring about the image, mm -hmm. because you can see a preacher, you know, with a bunch of rappers and automatically assume, oh, you know, he's trying to acclimate. He's doing this, that and a third. When in reality, you don't know what assignment God has him on, you know, to to teach them, to pour into them. They may be going through a deep depression and all we see is the glitz and glamour mm -hmm. when when he's like, no, I sent her there. To, to, to help them through this process so they won't commit suicide. But all you see is, oh, that's Pastor Z with a rapper. You know, she's trying to be known. She's trying yeah. to be this. And I'm like, I'm on assignment, baby. I don't have time to try to convince you. So it's tearing you down those. Like my husband. Where, oh, really? Yeah. Because uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all finish. No, you know, because sometimes, you know, I, I'm just sitting here listening because, you know, um, I understand, you know, you mm -hmm. said Jesus wasn't around church people. Right. He wasn't around with, he, I mean, he was religious, religious people. Religious yeah. People. So he's basically, um, he's the type of person that meets you where, where you're where at. You at. He yep. showed us, he showed us how to live for him. And I think a lot of times what happens is, you know, we do get caught up in all those different catches and when it comes to growing up or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can be quite honest with you. You know, I thank God for having the opportunity to, go through some things and never being a member of any church or none of that, mm -hmm. just like your friend. And um, I just, my children, they never been a member of any church. Mm -hmm. we teach them, been teaching them all their life. They've been to some churches, but we, you know, the Bible don't tell you to join a church, so I never joined one. Mm -hmm. I, I, if you find it in the scripture, let me know. I, I've definitely joined it tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I'm well. saying? You show me where Jesus <laughs> joined it. Um, I'll join it just like he did. You know, whatever he, Whatever you tell me to do, I believe if you, the Bible says you're in Christ. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It says that you're in Christ. Paul said that they, they, you know any man be in Christ Jesus. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I just I feel like you know there's nothing wrong with joining. I feel like everybody got to understand that different people. You had Philip, you had Thomas, you had Peter, Paul. you had all these different mm -hmm. people that was from different walks of life. That's the way God God meets you where you at. And he right. loves you. He loves you. You know He loves you. Right? I don't, you know, I don't get caught up in that. If you t if he tell you to do something, you do it. You know what I mean? Don't forsake the seminary yourself. Mm -hmm. I get it. I was, I was waiting on you to finish, yeah, it, but you it. beat me to it. I mean, I've been, I've been a I teach. I've been right, teaching right. For years, but I just don't put those stipulations like everybody try to do those. Because everybody, not you got guys in prison, man. You got people that's home yeah. outside of the road yeah. nobody never go to. I don't play with it. Mm -hmm. You're not willing to do some things. And I talk to many pastors. Mm -hmm. Not just I, a lot of them, don't know. That's mm -hmm. who I'm friends with. But at the end of the day, hey, man, you know, I don't do what every I do what God tell me to do. Right. I don't I don't get caught up in I'm going to do I'm going with you. And I don't do all that. You know, if God tell me to do it, I do it. If you want to go feed the homeless, mm -hmm. if you want to go do something in mm -hmm. Jesus, I'm coming. I'm going to put that money up and I'm going to do what it takes to get the ministry, the word out and everything else. I'll evangelize. I'll do whatever you want. Right. Do. Right. I think a lot of times people just I mean, they try to complicate and frustrate the grace. Mm hmm. And I, I don't, I don't get out with it. You know, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I, don't, mm -hmm. I hadn't did that in years. I quit doing that 26, 27 years ago. I don't even, what, what do you want from me? Right, right. The same as you. Right. Do you want to accept me as your brother or not? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me. And I meet, I deal with rappers and everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't play with it. Charleston White, one of the guys who everybody say, oh, he's this, he's that. He, you shouldn't be around him. He got his Farrakhan. I don't care nothing about all this stuff. Right, right. I meet people where they at. God got me on a mission where you ain't even for to talk to these people, but you'll talk about them. Mm -hmm. You won't even have an opportunity to speak with them, but I do. So I'm not going to play with what God mm -hmm. put in me to deal with my people that mm -hmm. he put in my life. You know what I mean? And I think it's just about understanding your purpose and your assignment. Self-awareness. Um, you know, the the I want to go back to, you know, you saying forsake not the assembling of yourselves. Yeah. So it's it's been a huge topic, especially since the pandemic. Because a lot of people, a lot of people have chosen not to go back to church. They're like, I learned God more just sitting at the house. And I saw a lot. My eyes have been enlightened since I was in the pandemic. And, and now they're just like, I don't think I have to ever go back to a building. That's the thing I love the pandemic for mm -hmm. is the fact that the exposure, the, the exposure. No, but it made a lot of people learn how to study. For themselves. For themselves. Yeah. And yeah. I, because they couldn't We've go been to church. Doing that. Yeah. So <laughs> they had to learn how to open this book and figure these words out themselves mm -hmm. and not just have somebody try to break it down and believe everything that this person is saying because some people don't, as I said, don't actually but, teach from the but, scriptures. But why not do both? I mean, what's wrong with doing both? Nothing's wrong with doing both. what I'm saying? Nothing. That's, that's the problem Nothing's with wrong everybody. with doing both. Everybody want to, they get insecure about how they worship 
and then they want to place it on somebody else. And what so, works for yeah, them. Yeah, so they can make it to where they can mm-hmm. get confirmation. Yeah. They're going to force confirmation. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that ain't that ain't cool. Mm-hmm. You but know what I mean? I know God is big enough for the job. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We I'm know bad, that. Bad, we you, know that. You're telling everybody, but the Holy Spirit, do you exclude the Holy Spirit? Is it right. the men who accept Christ mm-hmm. and the women who, who accept Christ, their Lord and Savior? Does he maneuver through the Holy Spirit? Mm-hmm. Does he? I mean, the, 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 I mean, Does the man is known. The man is known by the fruit that he bears, right? Uh, or a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. So you got to try the spirit by the spirit. And, and I don't he, care who it is. You can be in a church, or yeah. I can be sitting here talking to y'all. Yeah. You try the spirit right. by the spirit. That's when you let your Holy Ghost work for you. But that's right. why when you and, said that, though, that's why I'm, I, when you were talking about, you know, you can do both. I, I totally agree with that. But at the same time, you need to study whatever that's being taught for yourself. To know that whatever the person is teaching is correct. I mean, Second Timothy says that though. Study to show yourself approved unto but God. A workman need not though. to be ashamed. So you you yeah. have to let the Holy Ghost teach you how to rightly divide the word of truth. But a lot of people don't do They're that. They're not they just doing go it. there. And the pandemic helping people to me. It but did. I'm just hoping that they don't go back to their regular routine. Unfortunately, it is because everybody yes. has been protesting to go back to normalcy. Yeah. And the thing about the pandemic that if you really are spirit led, you can see what God was trying to do is he's trying to break that. He's like, I need you to get back to me. I need you to get back to me personally, not, um, you know, as, as far as just your regular way of doing things is is it really should have what it should have done is get people right back to him instead of you know oh bishop this bishop that i need a praise team to do this i need a worship leader to lead me into worship no you lead yourself into worship you get in your own prayer closet you need to learn how to preach to yourself the bible says david encouraged yourself in the lord you do the same thing crack that bible open 66 books okay so you go in there and you do you do it yourself do the work and that's what people don't want to do they want to be spoon fed they want somebody to preach them they shout they get a good word they go home they live like they've been living the rest of the week you know and then they complain about it oh he's just giving us a bunch of scripture he's giving us a bunch of this but they're not getting it for themselves that's never going to change to me because you have people who example who are bigger Mm -hmm. and i want to work out i want to work out i'm going to go to the gym whatever might go in the gym for two seconds and then come back and i'm like i'm mm -mm, too (laughs) too much hard work to try to lose all of that right i go do the surgery everybody's Mm -hmm. looking for the easy way out get quick but there's no easy way to god yeah but i tell you what he definitely loves you he he says it constantly in the bible he loves us Mm -hmm. i think that's the thing that we got to understand and he loves us where we're at jesus Mm -hmm. He loved, he, he just, he loves, he loved the blind man. He loved the man Zacchaeus in the tree in Luke chapter 19. Wherever you was at, he loved you. If you was blind, bought a male, whoever you were, he loved you. He didn't turn nobody away. Well, I think where we're going wrong is we're trying to play Jesus. Mm-hmm. When all he told us is just be a disciple. You know, go into all the world and preach the gospel, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, with love and kindness. Have I drawn thee? The problem is we're trying to be their judge. We're trying to be their lawyer. We're trying to be their jury. We're trying to be all of those parts instead of just loving them to the cross. If you just love with your life, just live with your life, it, it the Holy Spirit would draw. He's the one that will bring about conviction. He's the one that does the heart surgery. That's why it says don't put on the form of godliness. You know, it's a lot of people putting on the form and denying the power thereof. And so that's what we're, we're, we're projecting onto people because the people that's doing that, they're still messed up themselves. Yeah. And so they're going out and witnessing to people and they want to see an outward manifestation when Christ is like, if you would just love them, I'm dealing with them from the inside out. Mm-hmm. You'll still you'll start seeing an outward manifestation because I'm changing them internally. You don't have to tell them, hey, you shouldn't be out here, you know, twerking, showing your butt, bending over, you're in um provocative clothing, you know, cussing, drinking, pimping, whatever it is that you do, ain't judging nobody. But it's like you're expecting them to say the sinner's prayer and then just walk away. Listen, man. It's a process. A light, man. It's a process. It is. It, it should is. be a light that leads people out of darkness. If you right. living for God, people should be able to see you. It don't matter who you are. Exactly. Where you at. If you're dealing with people and they're around you and they're not seeing something in you, they make them respect you, then you need to check your walk. And your life should <laughs> preach even when you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, I mean, it goes back to not, some, some people, you're the only Bible that they see. And so it's like, you don't have to show me a scripture if I see your life. And that will make them say, I want that. Whatever it is that she has, I want it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's when you start, the, the Holy Spirit will start drawing them. He draws, yeah. you know, he's, he's, he's a gentleman. He don't force himself. 
I stand at the door and I knock. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to let them in. So the Holy Spirit will constantly be knocking on your heart through conversation, mm -hmm. through, you know, you through it, what, what, whatever it is, no, you know, whatever. That's avenue. what I always, I always pray about. about. I always Nicodemus, pray. Like, Nicodemus was like what you're saying. Right. You know, the whole time he was dealing with Jesus in the book mm -hmm. of John, you mm -hmm. know, it was pretty much it was something in him that kept drawing him to Jesus. Right. All the way through. Right. We see him Developing. And but it's, see, it's but telling it's, of who we are because yeah. you know he went to Jesus at night. Yeah. He didn't want nobody no. else to know. But he went back again. Like what it's, I'm saying it's, is, right, it's right. A, it's, a, it's a constant evolution. Is what exactly, I'm yeah. exactly. Basically, everybody that we see, we want to put them in a spot where they're at. But God has an ultimate plan to mm -hmm. take you as He want to take you. Mm -hmm. It's God to give the increase. Mm -hmm. So when I see a person in a certain position. I don't just leave him there. I act like it's over for him because that's what this council culture do. We can't set up and look at people and say, oh, well, this is what he is. You don't know what he is. God knows what he is. Right. You you, you got to let that person evolve because God is the one going to grow that seed, not you. Yeah, but it goes back to what I said. You know, like you, like you just said, the, the Bible says one man plants, another man oh, waters. Water. God brings the increase. Yeah. We trying to do all of it. That's it. We want to do all of it. And Can and it goes back to one, one of my friends said, you know, she think it's a competition in the church to show who's more holy, who's more anointed, who's more powerful. I touched them and they got saved. They got filled. They got delivered. They didn't have a taste for cigarettes that day. And I'm like, so some were healed immediately and some were healed as they went. That's right. And so it's like, stop trying to play Jesus. Stop trying to play the Holy been Spirit. Like that in the church where it's always people wanting to be seen because you had those people mm -hmm. who. Um, would always throw themselves on the floor or pray it out loud, pray it out loud <laughs> or had to be <laughs> Let the people know they're fasting. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and people look yeah. at them as like, that's the, the most holy one in the church mm -hmm. because she'll be like the mother of the church. So, to right, say. right. Um, but it's it, when you start reading the Bible and searching things, you're like, that's fleshly. Right. All of that it's is self-exalting. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. you're not uplifting Christ. That's why a lot of times I try to practice in everything that I do. Um, somebody give you a compliment. You'd be like, it's only because of God. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to always give him the glory in everything you right. do, no matter what it is. And, you know, it's, it's really pride. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an idol. It's idolatry. Because you want the praise and the worship to come to you. Mm -hmm. And we don't see that that's luciferic. Pretty much because that's what that's all Lucifer wanted. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to take the glory away from God. Exactly. And so that's why the Bible says he hates a proud spirit, mm -hmm. even a proud look. Mm -hmm. And because pride takes the glory, it takes the light, it takes the face off. Mm -hmm. It takes eyes off of Christ yeah. and puts it on you. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the problem with a, a lot of people that's in the body of Christ. But it's really it's really across the board, because when you look at the word, at the, I mean, at the world, pride is 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 dominant everywhere every everything is about me it's it's me 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 and it's me it's easy me. for anybody to fall in that trap but that's why i right. say practice makes perfect if you start to practice to say anytime whenever you're doing anything saying it was only because of the power of god or right. only because of the power of jesus mm -hmm. yes you might remember to say it a couple times and sometimes you'll be like oh thank you i know i did a good job but the more you say it is the more you take self out of it mm -hmm. and you always giving him the glory Wait. but unfortunately yeah, yeah, it comes yeah. it usually comes through a breakdown you know, God having to humble you and that 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 humbling process is sometimes devastating. You're, you're losing things. Um, you know, you're, you lose your job, you lose your family, you, you're stripped away of everything. And so it puts you in a place or in a position where you you don't have anything else but to look up. To look up and say, save me. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. You know, it's not about me. And that's where a lot of people's pride is broken. It's mm -hmm. broken through brokenness. But um, it's it's unfortunate because that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And it's like I said, it's not just in the world. You see it a lot in the body of Christ. And that's the real unfortunate part because we're suffering. And it's causing the body of Christ to suffer. And we're losing a lot of souls that we were sent to be saved or to save, you know, to bring them into the fold. Because of that, because man, of pride. Man, mm -hmm. you dope, man. I like the way you. I like the way you come across. Well, thank you. You know, God is good. <laughs> I mean, you want His angels. Praise you know? God. Yeah. I want to go back to you know when you were younger. Did you always want to be in the ministry, or no, what did you want to be? Absolutely not. I want to be an actress, and I just wanted to be a save actress that talked about Jesus. I didn't. I didn't want to do this. So it was like when when I knew the call was on my life, I ran. Wow. Fiercely. I was literally uh, Shakari Richardson so <laughs> in the street. So the acting, are you still acting right now? <laughs> yes, well, not right now. I'm, I'm working on a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, the last film that I shot was in late part of 2018. 
And so I was, I mean, I was an actress in that movie. I co-wrote and directed and did What's the producing. biggest film you've been in? It's called Lady Luck. That's the Lady Luck. Movie? Yeah. And I'm so it's on, it it's, it's on um, Amazon Prime. Yeah, I'm and so up. we just I'm did the up. sequel no to Lady big, Luck. But no so. big, no big screen. Not major. Not, not, yeah, not, not, I mean, Amazon, you know what? It's a lot of movies on Amazon now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got movies in Redbox. I got movies on ED. I'm talking about big screen. We we've had some showings in the AMC theaters yeah, in Dallas now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Shout out to, 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 to a bunch of you know you're film right people there. I worked in. You're doing it right. I'm, in there now. I'm talking about back then. Back, oh, about back then. No, I haven't. As far as like major studio motion pictures, no. But um, I mean, I've had. I've done like six or seven movies. Did you do so. acting classes? I did theater in, in college. In college. Yeah. Okay. And I've done workshops here and there, but I mean, no, I didn't. I, as far as training to be an actress, I think I learned more about being an actress in church. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you so, say? Where, okay. Where, where can people find you at? Where, where um, can, y'all finish so. up this day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where can people find me? I am on, um, it's, right here, okay, here. so y'all can find me. My name is Zanya Marette Robinson. I'm on Facebook. You can look me up at Zanya Marette Robinson. I'm on Instagram at Zanya Marette. I'm on Twitter at Z- Zanya Marette. And then ZMR Ministries, of course, is at ZMR Ministries across the board. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Um, what else, Jay? That's my brother. Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, YouTube. Those are the Instagram, Instagram, Instagram at ZMR Ministries. Y'all can go there and you can see um, all of the episodes from January. We got started. Uh, we went live January 11th. So if you want to catch an episode, you can YouTube or the Facebook page at ZMR Ministries. Hey, so- Spelled Mar. Marat. So my name is Zonya Z O N Y A Marat M A R A E T Robinson R O B I N S O N Zonya Marat so Robinson. We appreciate you, man. And, Thank uh, y'all for having me. No, Thank no, y'all. No, we love we love you. You come back to Dallas. You can come hey. on the show at, at our location in okay. Dallas, and okay. uh, we can finish this up. But uh, D Town part two, the triple yeah, D. Yeah, It'll uh, be a part two. We definitely Damn. appreciate your time. You know what I mean. Uh, shout out to what's your home girl name. Uh, 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 Pastor Anita, Anita Jawar. Anita Jawar, yeah, yeah that's my, my, cousin, well, my, cool. cousin. Oh, my, my cousin. My cousin, my cousin, that's my cousin. Cool. That's, my cousin. Cool. that's my cousin Omar's wife got arrested. So y'all know Bishop. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, uh, so, shout out, real yeah, talk. So, shout out to my brother Gerard holding it Gerard, down in the corner. Gerard, hey, yeah, seem like Mr. Like, McCullough over yeah, there. Yeah, hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Check it, man. We, we should have got him on the table. I could have. Got some words. Oh, he got a lot to say. Took, trust they me. They took it from me, but I just stood back and watched. <laughs> next time, you said no, next no, time when we come to Dallas. Yeah, 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 real talk. Make sure you come with her, bro. We gonna set you real up. Real talk. I yes. need somebody to talk to me. <laughs> I let you go, man. It's a unique hustle, man. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs>